every day is a good day, but today is the best day because I have Hillary here. Hillary Don Herrera, she's one of our Erica's educators. She is here to do all things acrylic. Yeah, I'm excited. You are a mover and a shaker in the industry. I try and to be. you're also my dear friend. Yeah, and you've never worn acrylic before. Never. So we're gonna do everything from prep to application to free edge shaping and top filing. And we're gonna show you how. Be gentle, always. Mm. Let's do this, okay. So we're gonna prep you first. We wanna do some length on these, so I'm gonna take a little bit length down of your natural free edge, but I'm gonna leave like how this one has just a little bit, I'm gonna smooth it, but you want something for your form to be able to slide underneath. Okay. So my favorite choice to do that is the diamond hand file that is a medium, okay. because you don't, and you could do fine, as well mm -hmm. and I like to just slide under there one thing I've learned is keeping the face up so I can see the diamonds just a little bit is going to allow me to get that edge kind of close without causing any discomfort so Hillary what are some of the like the newbie positions that you see often so sometimes I see a few different like hand holding things that can get in your own way so for example when you're isolating to just one finger uh -huh. the problem is you're really inhibiting any movement so then you can't get all your angles and then what we do to compensate is we move our body to go so uncomfortable and you hold in that position all day and it wears your body down instead of letting our tools do the work. So if you're going to do an underhand hold, I suggest letting the fingers rest on your own hand. If you prefer the overhand hold, you want them to relax and you can still hold one finger. Mm -hmm. Just keep your wrist neutral so you're not super tweaking it. Right. Yeah. And all these things make a difference when you're doing even six to 12 clients a day. Absolutely. And those are what's really important because you're going to wear yourself down if you're not pulling the right angles. So another thing I see a lot is blinding yourself to what you're filing. So like my view, if I keep it at 45 so I can go through these, I can still see what I'm doing and I can pull the skin back and make sure I am intentionally filing just on the nail plate. Um, whereas if I blind myself to it, because I think I need to stay straight up and down. Yeah. We can potentially cause harm by putting too much pressure in and we can overfile. Well, you're doing it like so gentle. So gentle. Well, the tool does the work for me, which is really nice. So I can just slide right through and my pressure is not a lot. It's very much so sliding underneath there, smoothing those edges and then leaving just a little bit for forms to go underneath. So right here, see how I separate the skin from the nail plate? I'm at a 45 and I'm stabilizing the finger so that it's not like wiggling all over the place. Sure. And that way I can get through things. All these little things make a huge difference when it comes to time efficiency. Um, there's a real balance between getting the job done really well, like really great quality and still being aware yeah. of your timing. Okay, so that is our free edge shaping. And notice how we left just a little bit of a edge to be able to slide the form under. So now I'm gonna prep the plate. We want some texture to the nail plate or it's not going to be able to like bond well and that's where we get the popping off and all of that. And sometimes we use the phrase remove the shine, which is true but it can be misleading. We still need some texture to the nail plate. So I really like this adjustable mandrel. Mm -hmm. It just yeah. untwists, so it's a little bit loose. You don't want to untwist it all the way, no right. need. Mm -hmm. These little bands are gonna expand. You know this. I know, but I love hearing somebody else talk about it. I'm just like, It's yeah. weird. You're like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh -huh. I love it. Wiggle this over. I do, these are, the zebra mediums are so good. I like to just squeeze the tippity top. One thing I see often is people will think they need to cover this barrel. Yeah. And I mean, I understand that like impulse, but there's no way you're going to do it. Yeah. The little screw top, little screw it'll top. cut into them. So you want that to sit just a smidge above it and then tighten Absolutely. it down. Just a little smidge, smidge. Little, little smidge and they're pre-seasoned. I'm not going to go really close to the cuticle or the proximal fold, fold zone because it's such a big tool. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you don't want to be shoving a larger tool into a smaller space. That's when we create damage. But we do have a bigger job to do here. So this is a larger barrel. It'll work for us. Okay, so what we're going to do with this sandy band, because we are on the natural nail plate, is we're going to run at low RPMs. Yeah, we're going to go very gently. So you just start seeing a little texture. And there's like a touch of damage, just like a little bit. So when you have that, like if you feel like you have a little cave or divot, mm -hmm. it's just a very light very light tickle so that you lose all the shine and you're actually getting texture. Yeah. 
on the nail plate. So all of this can be happening while you're doing your consultation. I like to call it a working consultation. So you're never sitting here with your client not working. So my first question I always ask everybody, especially with repeat appointments, is how's your length and shape? That means I can immediately get in there and start working while they're telling me their hopes and dreams and goals for their nails. Because this has to happen regardless. First of what product we're putting down. And today we're doing put down some acrylic, so that's fun. I'm an acrylic virgin. You've never had it on? Never. Wow. And we've been in the nail industry, my family, forever, and I was never allowed. Oh, really? It was homecoming, and I went to a salon, walking distance from my high school, and came home, and my parents made me take them off. Whoa, how did you take them off? I don't even remember. Probably bit them off. Yeah, for sure. And then I think my parents were mad about that, like, oh, and now we're going to pay for a dental to chip tooth. I'm going to interject on that. I lost a tooth biting off the acrylic nails in high school. You did? Uh, Are was, you kidding Did you me? tell dad the truth of what you did to lose yeah, the tooth? I was the third kid. They didn't care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but That's I was awesome. But I had a fake tooth, and that porcelain or acrylic gave out biting off the nail. Oh, no. <laughs> well, that probably made them not want you to have them more. Wow. Right. So, yeah. note to self. Do not chew off your nails. No. It will be a dental No, bed. no. And, you know, your nail tech can do, like, reducing a ton of the bulk with an e-file and bit, and then they can finish a little bit soaking so we reduce damage. Look at you. I know. Okay, so this part I like to call a quick cuticle check. Basically what I'm doing is I'm staying very flat to the nail, and I'm just coming up our sidewall and into our proximal fold. That is so gentle. Is it? Good. So I don't even know you're touching me. You want it to be gentle. So many people are really even sensitive to cuticle pushing. I'm one of them. Are you? So I think that's almost made me more gentle of yeah. a nail tech. As I do this cuticle check, I'm noticing right here, if I put more force back towards that proximal fold, this is what we like to refer to as like overgrown. Some people like to call it overgrown epinicium, your overgrown proximal fold. But what we have is some dead skin cells stuck to the plate. And if I just go ahead and push and shove, I can actually cause more damage. So I'm going to leave that one and I will go through and address it with one of the diamond bits and we can just exfoliate it off. Because it's also more comfortable. Like if you start pushing that rim, it becomes uncomfortable and it's easier right. just to take a diamond bit and sweep it away. Yeah. Versus just... have this rough ridge that's already irritated, right? Because of the pushing. Right, and then you're gonna go in and do more work and cause issues. And I even had somebody send me a picture with a pusher. What happens is if we can't get it, we start angling and putting more pressure than we normally would. And there's like permanent damage on a plate. Like I've even seen plates that will go around the spot that got too much pressure. So we just don't want to do that. No. We don't want to do that. All right, so now I kind of know what I'm dealing with cuticle-wise. Okay. Let me show. So let's recap real quick yeah. is nail virgin, nail plate. You've been having a conversation. How long should this take, like what we have just done, on, on two hands? Eight minutes. Eight minutes. Tops. Tops. Like you should be like through there, and then we're ready to go into good basic cuticle care Great. within the first 10 minutes of an appointment. So within the first 10 minutes, you should be through your basic nail prep and getting ready to go into cuticle work. That's going to help your time be efficient and you're not sitting here waiting for anything because any service you're going to do that's an application is going to require the same prep work if you're wanting product to hold on to a nail plate. Okay, so I want to show the cylinder bit. Here's okay. why. It has a flat edge. Now, that has advantages and disadvantages. Talk and to he, me. Okay, because it has this flat edge, mm -hmm. we're actually going to stay parallel to the plate. A lot of people think, I'll use that flat edge and carve. And that causes lots of issues, so many unknowns. So we still want to stay flat, but I'm using that flat edge because there are little diamond bits on the end and it can work on exfoliating the skin. And we can do this motion where we're almost coaxing it off the plate. And then I'm just going to do a slight forward towards them, not down towards the plate. Right. Slight forward towards them to kind of coax it back. So let's start at 10,000 RPMs. Let's do it. Okay, I'm gonna slide to the side and just get a feel for how the exfoliating is working on you. And I'm just tracing right over those dead skin cells. Now, if I'm unsure what's still stuck to the plate or not, we give it a little brush yes. so that we're not going in blind. 
Are you team um, brush towards your client? Yes. Me too. You know Are what? We the only ones. No, you taught me that. I Here's did? what. Mm -hmm. And me. it makes so much sense. I think we um, want the dust away from them. Or someone just somewhere showed us that. And I get how it can be confusing. It's like, oh, we're taking the dust and we're pushing it. And right. it's like, no, we're removing it all. We're removing. And you can even do a little circular sweep if it's really bugging you. But what we're wanting to do is you can see that this has already lifted. And if we are going towards ourselves, we pull it back down. Versus you can watch that little dead skin cell lift. And then we start getting the little pocket. 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 Okay, so that's like one of the favorite things to use something with a flat edge. There's lots of options, right? We yep. have the small tapered barrel. Yeah, that's your the favorite. Long and lean. That long is and lean. That's my favorite. I love it. Or um, cylinder. Right, and you are. I love one of your sayings that you say is the bigger the tool. Bigger job. Bigger job. Bigger tool. Bigger and job. Bigger tool. Always bigger job. Bigger tool. Smaller job smaller tool and some people in like space the yeah absolutely mm -hmm. in space in grit mm -hmm. and then the other element of that to me is your speed mm -hmm. so if you're going over and over here and you feel like it's just not cutting it I started at 10,000 rpms if their skin is thicker we don't want to lean in and give more pressure we want to turn our speed up and let our tools do the work for us. Yes. Okay, so that is our cylinder bit. I'm gonna show you a couple other options. Yeah. So on the ones that are not connected to the plate, mm -hmm. you can go in with a few different bits and choose what fits. I really like mm -hmm. something that's got, this is the nib, right? Yeah. And I like that it can open the pocket for me in an efficient way, so it starts leaning towards that high-end look where we open and can apply product tight, but I'm not doing, some people don't have the time or the clientele that care to sit for the extra time for super, super high end. Well, and it's different service. Like why would you do high end cuticle work if you're gonna apply acrylic? When you're buffing and shaping with a hand file. So many other things, out. so many other things. So yeah, in the end, we might wanna tuck back and we'll use a couple other things once we get the acrylic on yeah. so that we can get it nice it. and tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna run this in reverse because yeah. I am right handed. Yes. And it's because I'm coming from this opposite side. Relax for me. Yeah. Ooh. I learned something cool the other day. You know the relax your hand, relax your hand? Yeah. Some people don't know how to do that. So I've also given cues like wiggle your toes, something to move their mind. I was doing my husband's little manicure the other day and he's like, I don't know how to relax my hand. Like it's just a phrase we assume people know how to do. And then they're trying to relax their hand and then they're more conscious of their hands. So I just said to him on a whim, relax your shoulders. And everything followed and his hand relaxed. Everybody knows how to drop their shoulders. It was cool. So there's a little tip we're playing with. We're gonna go in and use the cheek of this bit, meaning cheek, cheek. not the very pointy, pointy front. Right. We're just gonna use kind of the side of it in reverse. It's gonna help us roll back so and exfoliate gentle. that. So gentle. And it's almost like a little circle motion. If you feel like you get caught, just a little tickle, tickle. I don't wanna go in blind. It's so gentle. It's so gentle. It's just sweeping it out. Okay, anything with a belly though, we don't want to come and floss down that sidewall, right? Yeah. It can definitely overdo it for us. So I'm just going to put the tip to the skin and I'll use a smaller tool. So we get, I get asked that a lot in our YouTube channel. I was like, what are you talking about referring to as flossing? Okay, that's and a great question. It is a great question. It is, and we kind of throw around these phrases that we assume everybody gets. So what it is, is we often come along this proximal fold and then we pull towards us. Yeah. With, with the tip of the bit still towards the client, and this is a little too wide for that. We're actually, if you can see, like on the plate quite a bit flossing down where we're gonna create a weak point. So instead, it's tip to skin gently, and honestly, I prefer to pull a smaller bit if you wanna get those. Yeah. So you can kinda see how this is just really quickly coaxing back that fold. If you wanna go in there and roll it back more, you absolutely can. I like to Chicken open that up. Now, right-handed, this is gonna only work. We have a little catch. Got it in reverse if you're coming this direction. So our lefties, you're gonna function the opposite of what I'm saying here if you wanna do this exact service. Yeah. Let's take a look. Let's see where we have landed. Yeah. So I love this. This is a great example here. Can you see that pocket? 
in there. All right, so we finished our essential nail prep, which is shortening that free edge, smoothing it a little bit, full nail plate with the adjustable mandrel and sandy band to get texture. Then we went in, we did a pusher really quick. We used a cylinder on that stuck on skin. And then we went through with a nib bit and got that essential cuticle work done. So the skin is up and off of the plate so product can adhere. You should be under about 15 minutes for that essential nail prep. And from there, you can always choose if you want to step into more high-end cuticle work. If you like content like this, go ahead, like, like comment, comment, and subscribe. subscribe.